learn how to use Figma. Then the next thing is you can go ahead and learn the principles. So there's a book, Refactoring UI. I assure you that when you learn to use Figma and you read this book, you've got everything you ever need to start your career as a UI UX designer. Everything else is to build, 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 build this product, build that product, build this UI, design this interface, design that interface. Do you understand? Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Tales by Moonlight, episode 12. And I'm your Sahara Sab. And tonight we have Temi Tayo, or, T or I don't know, his Twitter name is Tayo Ten, Product Builder. So tonight we'll be looking at product design. I mean, we've done UI UX in this episode before. You can check out my channel. We have something on UX, UI, UI UX design so this is our second time touching on the topic of design so we are glad to have you tonight here and we hope we're going to have a nice time um you're going to teach us something about design those who are considering career path in design especially in the ar that is augmented reality and virtual reality space all right so you're welcome tonight welcome everybody um can you tell us a bit about yourself uh, before we we, we take off yeah yeah, um, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Tim Tayo. Hello, uh, you almost forgot my name, but it's okay. So, I'm Tim Tayo. Hello, I'm, I'm, I'm a senior product designer. Uh, I'm currently leading the team at Lexi, a software solutions company that is based on building technologies using um, Web3 and um, blockchain, basically. So, yeah, that's what I do. I'm also an ARVR artist. Um, I like to build experiences, immersive experiences. Um, I, I keep diving and diving until I find out that um, um, there is, I've found out every possible way to, to solve problems. That's something I really want to do. Yes, because I also love to play basketball. I'm a basketballer. Amongst oh, the great. Players. Great. I used to play basketball as well, but I have a shoulder injury, so I did I've stopped. Play. Yeah. I'm very really old too, so yeah. I have to focus on other things. <laughs> All right, Arinze, Faith Amazi is clapping for you. Great. So tonight we see that you have a lot lined up for us, a six point presentation, starting from AR, VR, VR design, and you'll be ending with products or projects, sorry. You're telling us on how to go about projects and I know we're gonna have a great time. So for those who have joined already, I'm handing over the microphone to Timmy. So Timmy, over to you, please. Thank you very much, uh, Sahara and so. <laughs> um, hello everyone once again welcome to Sahara's show YouTube channel <laughs> okay so today is going to be fun um, I've already shown you the very is the very calm part of me we are diving into the very arrogant and stress field I like to stress people out I'm joking so yeah basically so um, today we're talking about designing ARVR products particularly speaking and a part of a part of the technology that has to do with product design, um, all about dealing with experiences, building better experiences for people. Thank you, Sahara, so much again for having me here. And everybody that joined and is yet to join, thank you also for having me here. Um, do well to share, because some people might have missed the alarm for 8 p.m. Some people might, have, by, might be on their way, and um, you're hasting them by sharing. So do well to share, maybe snippets or pictures and everything. It'll be great. Um, also, after the session, it'll be great to actually post um, what you got from this session, everything that you think from this session, make pictures and everything, and tag myself and Sahara, so it will be good on LinkedIn, Twitter, everywhere. So yeah, let's dive in. So we're talking about product design. So let's meet. Um, I want everybody here to introduce themselves while I introduce myself. Um, like I said earlier, I'm Tim Tayo. And uh, before I go even further, I'm going to take a very small cup of tea so that you can... You can I can step down and then dive in. So go ahead and introduce yourself, everybody. Demila, De Faith, everybody. Go ahead in the in the comment section. I'm Tim Dio. I'm a product designer, a senior product designer. I work at so so. Uh, I look forward to learning and getting more opportunities, particularly in ARVR. Go ahead and introduce yourself. I just give an I just give an intro. So yeah, moving on. So I am Tim Dio. Let me. So I'm just gonna read out the story about myself. And once upon a time, there was a product designer that I trained. Um, so much of a problem solver I was well. He currently still is. Um, so over a year ago, in his search for new ways to deliver better experiences for users, he found out about immersive technology, which is ARVR, 
And this is something that he has been learning more on how to leverage this technology in designing and for future of users. So I cancel that the users because I want you to know that it's not just about users this time. It's human experience that I'm all about. Um, so I've been building products for about five years now and some of these. So I started building in March, actually, March 2019. So it's about, it's about five years or it's over five years now. So uh, I look forward to shipping more products than the ones I've already shipped. Uh, to be continued, we'll, we'll know more about me as time goes on. So moving on, what do we expect to get from this session? So um, yeah, we'll talk about AR VR design. We'll talk about where you come in as a product designer, as a UI UX designer. We talk about the tools, the learning roadmap, resources and projects basically. And um, one thing that you really have to know is that um, this session is going to be very impactful. So your maximum attention is needed. Plus, everybody that comes for this session is going to be, is going to is going to have access to the best of the best that you have ever gotten ever about AR VR because I'm going to demystify it. I'm literally going to like unbox everything. So yeah, let's dive in. Um, okay, so now before we dive in, there's a rule and I really want everybody to follow this rule. I really, really want us to follow this rule. So, so the rule is be attentive. It is important that you're attentive. Now, I'm sure you didn't notice that I missed the E in attentive. Yeah, let's check. A-T-T-E-N-T-I-V-E. -E. It means you were not attentive. So you need to be attentive. And I hope you notice that I missed the T in the attentive that is here. So if you did, if you missed that again, it means you are not attentive. So please be attentive. I'm sure by now you'll have noticed that I put an R here instead of this, I wrote this time. So be attentive. That's my point. Do you understand? So please obey the rule and be attentive. That's one way you really learn. So yeah, let's dive in. Uh, are you ready to dive? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we are diving in. So yeah, now I'll talk about AR VR. It looks like I'm running, but I'm not running. I am going to my main point. So let's just flow. So speaking about AR VR, I'll just give you a very layman's definition of everything. So AR is bringing digital to you. VR is going to digital. MR is you are, you and digital are one. Forget the typo. Uh, my bad. Um, XR is everything digital immersive. Now, you are probably out here wondering what is that thing talking about? It's just saying digital, you are, it, it, what is this nigga talking about? So what I'm talking about is this. AR, VR, AR stands for augmented reality. You've probably heard of that before for your interest in this session. VR stands for virtual reality. So these are pictures that represent what these things mean. Um, AR means bringing the digital to you. And um, VR means um, going to the digital. So what I mean is AR is literally me using my phone to make something that's not there seem like it's there. Like you can see, there's no chair. There's no actual chair in the background of this. But there's a chair from the phone. That's to see what it looks like in my space, bringing digital to you. Remember I said that. Now, VR is you going to the digital. Now you have to use an Oculus lens or some lens, some box that covers your eye, your face from the real world and makes you feel like you're in another world. You are most probably very, um, very um, used to hearing VR a lot. VR headset, VR this, VR that, VR game. Um, so yeah. So now there's also MR. It was not a part of what we mentioned that we're going to talk about in this session, but I'll just talk about it very briefly. So MR, MR stands for mixed reality. Um, so for mixed reality, uh, you are the one, you are digital at one rather. So what it means is that you are here, but it looks like there's another you here, or there's something else here. As you can see, these are doctors. It looks like they're just wearing just a pair of glasses. But this, this, this lens is actually, uh, it means that there are mediums for you to, um, for you to, um, experience the mixed reality world. Do you understand? So this is what MR looks like. Hologram is an example of what it feels like, not necessarily exactly what it is, but um, you know how you are here and it looks like there's something else here in real time, in real life, without any without any any gadget access. Sometimes you have to use access from, with gadgets. Sometimes you don't need them. If you've watched um, a lot of these tech movies, you see they'll just do something with your hands and then there's an hologram building of the bank that they want to go and rob or something you get. So 
Yeah, so that's what MR is. So let's dive in um, or let's move on. So basically, this is where you come in as designers. So designers play a very crucial role in creating AR VR experiences. Now, um, it's important that you, you understand this. Um, I really want I really want us to pay maximum attention because we'll be learning a lot from this session. And um, yeah, I hope everybody else is having a great time too. So, so um, designers play a crucial role in creating AR VR experience. This time, users um, interact with more than 2D, more than flat surfaces, more than the UI that you have been creating. Remember, I'm trying to demystify, so you have to pay attention. Um, um, right now, VR and AR is about interacting with the 3D and the environment. Now, you are, you are using not just the, you see, people that experience the um, um, extended, everything all together is called extended reality. AR, VR, MR, everything is called extended reality. Like it sounds, you are extending reality. Now, so using not just their eyes and hands this time, they are using their ears, legs, their whole body basically. Do you understand? So that's what being fully immersed means. So you are, I'm walking into the space that is not there. I'm walking into, I'm, all of that that I'm doing is, is just me, um, it's just me literally, um, it's just literally getting immersed in this technology, in this experience. That's what VR or exp extended reality as a whole, that, that's what it means. And so here, the measure of great experience is how immersive and realistic it can be alongside the already existing one, the intuitiveness, the cleanliness, and you know, playing your UX, designing with Figma, doing all of that. It's just you being clean, being designing an experience that makes the user engaged, being intuitive, being creative, and all of that. This one is also all of that plus how immersive your technology is, how realistic your technology is, do you understand? So that's what all of this is about. And so the tools now, we're talking about the tools. Remember, I'm trying to do this to fire, and I really hope you are following. If you are following, please go ahead in the comment section and tell me that, okay, hi, Tayo or Tayotin, whichever you think is comfortable with you. I am following, I am learning a lot. This is so far what I've learned from what you've said. So moving on, so we have the tools. Now we have Figma, we have Spark AR, we have Adobe AR, that's called Eru, actually. We have Lens Studio, we have 3D, that's Blender, and we have um, Unity. Now, all these tools are used are used for different things. Do you understand? Um, Figma, you are most to Figma, and if not, great. Um, I'm just going to give you an introduction. So Figma is actually the tool I use for UIX, directly speaking, and um, AR field, Spark AR is used for, is used for AR, is used for augmented reality. A lot of Instagram, in short, every of the Instagram filter you see and you have used one time or the other, or you have used or you are yet to use, um, was created using AR. That's this on the, on the second. And the third one is Adobe Aero. Adobe Aero is an augmented reality um, tool. If you have, if you have my LinkedIn or my Twitter, I posted some work, some of my works on Twitter. And on LinkedIn, you would notice that um, um, there's it's basically AR. Yeah, there's something that's not there in the real world. I'm seeing it via my Adobe Aero helps me with. I was going to add one of the works I did, but um, I'm going to share it as a resource to Saharan so So he's going to share with it, with with everyone basically. So um, there's Lens Studio. This is what Snapchat uses to create their filters. Just so you know, Snapchat filters are augmented reality filters. Just so you know, it is putting what is not there as though it is there. That's literally what document um, 3D Blender. So Blender is Blender is one really great tool. I I have a, I have a record and history of doing one particular donut in Blender. It's a donut, it's very small, but I created it myself from scratch. That's a very good thing. And I'm saying that because it's a tool that most people use to create 3D elements. So, uh, uh, so as we move on in this session, I would actually show you some things and um, you would understand better most of this things I'm saying. Unity is used for AR, VR, and game. So there's a time that I'll, I, didn't, I didn't add this to my introduction because I'm not so deep into it yet, but I also do game design. Um, I've created, I've created Room Wars with Uzenu Aluatubi. He's one of my friends. Um, we, we created Room Wars together 
and then I've created other games that experience, particularly speaking, gaming experience, particularly speaking. And I started using Unity by post because my gadget, I need to upgrade it. I don't want my gadget to run down. So then we have um, Unity. Now let's dive further. So I want to show you what um, Figma and Adobe Aero can do. Remember, this is not just another AR VR session where you don't really know what it is about. I'm trying to demystify it. So please follow. Now, this is what using Figma and Adobe Arrow can do. These two tools, if you know how to use them, you can create this. And I'm speaking to you because I have the experience. I've created this before or something like this before. Now, all you need is Figma and Adobe Arrow. Sometimes all you need is Adobe Arrow. Watch the video again. There's a chair. Then you want to bring the chair into a space that is not, that, that seems like the chair is there. Now, you can do this with Adobe Arrow and, and Figma. Allow me to use PG to say this thing. It's possible to run this kind of thing. Are you serious? With Adobe Arrow and Figma. All it takes is to go on YouTube, look for an Adobe Arrow tutorial, and check it. I'm, I'm serious. You, you would unblock your mind by, by doing this or something similar. Now, there's another thing I need to show you. You can also produce this wristwatch. I mean, you are checking a wristwatch. Um, you want to buy a wristwatch, you want to check how it looks on your hand, which is augmented reality. You can literally do this using Figma spark and lens studio these tools are very simple to use that's the funny thing you see a lot of people see these things as amazing things because they are you see every time you put out something that is not common everybody wants to know how you did it do you understand so the fact that it's not common does not make it a mystery it does not make it very hard to access or to do so i want you to understand that that it is very easy to use and i'm not saying it because i know how to do it or i have experience building all of this i'm it is easy to use because it is actually easy to use. So moving on, um, I'm going to share you the roadmap. Now I call this the Titan roadmap because I am here to demystify. So um, this is the Titan roadmap basically. I call it the Titan roadmap because it is my roadmap. Um, the roadmap because this is how I got to where I am now. I wish I had access. I could have actually shown you the work I did first and where I have got into at this point. Um, so yeah. The first thing I would say is you should learn, to, particularly speaking, Figma. Um, before, the, before this call, I told a friend that this session was going to be very insightful and impactful. That's not the exact phrase I used, but that's sort of what I said. And I said it because of this roadmap. Because if you run with this roadmap, you are going to, you are going to get to a point that you, you didn't imagine from the very start. Now, it looks like a mystery a lot. A lot of people reach out to me on Twitter and LinkedIn. And they always say that, Etayo, how did you do this? I really want to learn from you. Can you come up with this? I'll pay and all that. And I'm like, okay, okay, chill. This thing is not as hard as you imagine it. Just get into it first. So you, I don't know the meaning of blue figure. I just say it a lot. So um, the next to use AR, VR tools. So now that's Aeros, Park AR, Unity, and the likes. So this sounds like a big deal, but no, it's not. I learned how to use AR Aero in like two days. Not because I'm, I'm good or anything. It's because it's very easy to use. So there's, there's Swift XR. There's a lot of web AR platforms. Web AR is doing augmented reality or virtual reality on the web. Don't worry, you get to understand better as time goes on. Most likely, if you follow my LinkedIn or Twitter, I post most of this on my LinkedIn or Twitter. So um, do well to follow. I would, I would update you. But right now, I can't really go into the details of that. But learn how to use Adobe Aero of Spark AR, Unity, all these things. Once you know how to do Figma, learn how to use this thing. How do you, how do you have to learn? Or if you can take out the laziness and jump to um, YouTube and say, how can I, or Adobe Aero for beginner, or how to create AR, VR with Adobe Aero. All those things you get, go ahead and do these things. You would make a lot of sense. The next thing is to create AR experiences, create a portfolio, Post it on LinkedIn and on Twitter. All these things I'm telling you, there are things I did. The first AR project I did, I posted it on LinkedIn and on Twitter, and I got a lot of engagement. And that was the first. Now, I remember I said it's my roadmap. I know how to use this. I learned how to use Arrow. Now I went to post it on LinkedIn. The next thing I went to do is to build a network of XR guys. That's what I'm saying. It's my, my roadmap, and it worked for me. It can work for you. So go ahead, look for people that are into AR. We are connect with them. Um, I know of Marcella, I know of Ozeno, I know of myself, I think. I know of, um, I can't remember his name now. I know of Mide Ajibade, yes. So I know of a lot of guys that are into AR VR. So go ahead and, go ahead and um, reach out to these guys and say this, say, or follow them, basically. 
and then um, create VR experiences. Now, remember I said at first, create AR experiences. The reason you cannot create VR experience for a start is because to get an Oculus lens or any other lens is very expensive. If you are not getting a used or a fairly used, it's best to even get new. You don't, I don't advise anyone to get a fairly used lens. If you're getting a new lens, you need to get it for about 500K or like 600K or 400K. So if you are starting out, I wouldn't advise that you get it. Even if you have the money, I wouldn't advise that you get it for a start. I feel like you should do AR first, master it, and then build the network around AR. Go ahead and do VR. Post on, see, remember to always post on your LinkedIn, Twitter portfolio. You get. You have to always do that. It's very important. Um, now, talking about resources, I would go ahead and share resources in the chat in the comments. But remember, this session is for you to learn a lot. So everything I just shared is my presentation. I will now go into me talking very soon. So project ideas, I think you can work on. Um, furniture AR with Aero, wristwatch AR with Spark AR, FaceCap AR, Lens Studio and Spark AR. All these things, basically, you can create all these things. And Blender is one tool that can help you create 3D, like I mentioned earlier. Um, if you are familiar with Tuzino to be has been created a lot of um, a lot of 3D assets, basically. Um, fashion AR precisely creates it and creates it in 3D and it tests it on fashion, on the body, on the body, you get so you can do that too. Um, all right. So I said I was going to share resources on the comment section. So I'm doing that right away. So we can have access to these things. So these are the resources that I created. Created as far. I'm not the one that did most of these resources, but um, I just brought from here and there. Some of them, I use both plugins, both Figma plugins. I use them a lot. Um, so I just pulled resources from here and there. Um, I put resources from here and there. I did this and did that, basically. So you can actually get access to this. I also have a, an AI VR resource channel on Telegram. I recently just um, started making it active. I was, it was inactive for a bit. So you can go there and um, you can go there and um, you see you see all these resources. So, so I'm going to add like all these links. I'm going to add all the links, your LinkedIn and your Telegram group. I'm going to add it to the YouTube post so everybody can access the other resources. We'll be, in the, we'll, be in the, we'll be in the description box. Okay. That's great. That's really great. Um, thank you so much, Sahara. So this is a very good opportunity for everyone, including myself. Project ideas. So now you can work on this project. Now I'm making it sound like this is very simple because I'm saying so now you can work on this project as though you are so um, professional. So the thing is, you are actually, it, you can become, a, you can become a, a, an AR professional overnight. That's what I'm trying to say. What I mean is professional as far, you can start today and get the job done between today and tomorrow. What I mean is you can sacrifice two hours, three hours of your time, open and open or download the Adobe Aero software, install it and run stuff. So go to YouTube search or follow one of the links I shared, search uh, how to build stuff. I'm telling you how I did all, all my things. I've been doing this for over a year and um, this is literally how I, I don't think it's over a year. Okay, I started and then I stopped and then I started again. So it's about a year basically. And I've been doing this, so it's not, it's not necessarily a big deal. That's what I'm trying to say. That it's something that everybody can actually do. Um, so I think that we can go ahead and um, we can go ahead and uh, as much as you can try and um, try and get stuff done because it's easy. Do you get? It's very very easy. Um, see, augmented reality in the next five years. Okay, before I go that, I I, I want to talk about some things on a very personal level. And before I go sure. there, I just want to be sure that we can take questions. So if you want to connect with me, you can go on Google and search that thing. I'm proud. Yeah. Just go on Google and search that thing, basically. Uh, everything you want to know about me, you'll find me there too. If you want to know how many kids I have, if I have any kids, I don't have any kids, by the way. But if you want to know anything about me, go on Google and search. And I'm very open. I like to talk to people a lot. Um, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Say, Tayo, I was in your session. This is what I learned. I really hope this can we connect. Or I want to learn from you. I want to learn from you. Or you want to learn from me. Or you want me to learn from you. Whichever way, just reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm readily available. I like to reach out. I like to talk to people. 
Um, you right, yeah, yeah. yeah, thanks so much. Yeah. So I think, as I said, we're going to progress to the Q&A session now, right? I think we have a question already. So someone is saying how to make a career in UX UI design or UI UX design. This is a little bit off our topic, but I believe you can um, quickly answer it, please. Okay, great. Um, yeah, further questions can come in also. So how to sure. make a career in UI UX design? Um, first, you can, make a, you can make a career in anything. So if the main question is making a career, I'll tell you that to make a career, you just have to be consistent at it till you are good at it and you sell yourself. That's the, that's the, general, that's the general formula. But making a career in UI UX, it means that, um, you, see, I'm going to answer you very, very blunt and directly. You need to know how to use Figma. You need to know how, how UI UX works. So I have a resource channel, basically. Um, I could share with Sahara and so we could share with everybody. Um, basically, get resources, learn the, the principles. Do you get? You can go on YouTube. YouTube is a very great place. People, I never learned from anybody anything. No, I learned a lot from people, but I mean, I never went to take a course. Like I want to learn how this works and I have five years of experience. So I've been doing a lot of this with YouTube. That's what I'm trying to say. So go on YouTube and say that um, um, I, I want to be a UI UX designer, how to use Figma. Learn how to use Figma. Then the next thing is you can go ahead and learn the principles. So there's a book, Refactoring UI. I assure you that when you learn to use Figma and you read this book, you've got everything you ever need to start your career as a UI UX designer. Everything else is to build, 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 build this product, build that product, build this UI design this interface, design that interface, do you understand? So if you keep doing that, um, over time you would be, you, I mean, you, you, have, you had already started making a career in this thing already. So um, I think I answered your question, right? Um, if you have further questions or you need further clarity, please, um, please go yeah. ahead and... All right, sis, thank you. Thank you very much for the question. I think generally when you say career, a career is something that you want to do for a very long time. So ask my, yeah. my um, software development uh, mentor told me, it was like, learn the basic properly. Learn the basic properly. Do, do you need a microphone? To, Daniel, do you need a microphone? I want to type your question out. We can ask you to ask the question. In, um, so you can unmute. I'm, I'm giving you the microphone to ask your question. Hello, Daniel. You can unmute yourself and ask a question. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now, please. Yeah. All right, please. What are the specifications for like the laptop? Maybe a laptop for someone that wants to begin the um, AR. Great, thank you. I was going to ask that question too. Yeah, that's a very good question because when I started, when I started AR, my laptop was great, and then I went to game design, and my laptop was blowing breeze. <laughs> what I mean is that the fan was over speeding. It was very, it was very intense. So what I'm saying is that you, the, the gadget you need for um, AR VR is very, it's not as, it's not as um, tough. You don't, you, you, for Adobe Aero, you need the proper OK laptop, an 8 gig RAM, 4 gig RAM, um, proper storage, maybe 500 gig HDD. If it's an SSD, it's even faster. Uh, you just need you just need the laptop that that is okay, like an actual okay laptop, a good laptop. Do you get? Um, so yeah, an HP, a Dell. It's not so. It's, it's like what what can work on what a Photoshop. Yeah, exactly. What a Photoshop. If you look Photoshop, what a Photoshop or um, an averagely uh, intense um, 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 app can work on. Uh, would also work for AR VR, particularly for Adobe Aero, because that's what you start with. But as time goes on, the need to upgrade is higher. Now, I want to go deep into game design, but I cannot because I am yet to upgrade. I, I want to upgrade my gadgets. Do you get? So before I, I don't get the rig actually. So when I get the rig, then I can go into game design and do every other thing, explore as much as I want. So yeah. So I think that basic, the basic, very basic laptop would actually get the job done. Awesome. Then I hope that answers your question. You can just type in the comment box, yes or no. So as I was saying about career path, um, what my mentor told me was that learn the basic properly. It was like, don't go and be learning uh, frameworks and libraries and all of that. 
Yeah, it was like learn the basic, learn HTML, learn the tags well, know which, what you want to use for what, know what the appropriate tags, learn vanilla CSS. Don't be thinking of Tailwind or Bootstrap or all these things. Bootstrap. <laughs> yeah, they are good. So, so, and it has helped me. Like sometimes I can just take someone's even content management system or WordPress and go into the source code itself and do the modification there rather than this. It's, so, if you want to choose a career path in UI UX, I'm, I'm, what I'm going to add to you is that a career means like something you, you're going to be doing for at least the next 10 years. So you really have to put in a lot of time into it. Yeah, it means that that's what's going to put in food on your table. And uh, we, ha we had a series, as I mentioned earlier, we had a series on UI UX. And the guy gave us a point. And, but this is how I put it. It's, it's like, as we keep progressing more and more in the world, more and more stuff will be done on electronic gadgets. And once things are done in electronic gadgets, you need someone to design the interface, not the software developer. So you always need a UI UX person. I never thought about that. <laughs> it's crazy. Like you always need someone to, once there's a, there's a screen on the device that you have to look at it and navigate through from point A to point B, click here. The button should be here. The button should be this size. You should place this thing here, this thing there. You always, so, so this, I'm just giving you guys a secret for coming to my channel. Yeah. <laughs> as long as the world is getting more and more digital and we'll be doing more things online on gadgets. I mean, I was in the early 2000s, I was in secondary school, so I know what, how things have changed. So going forward, we really, you, it's a career path that if you do it very well. And also, if you look at the tech space right now, I said there's a lot of layoff, layoff in, in the big tech company. Yeah, so you might be scared of entering tech. But the truth is that if you really know what you're doing, like you will never be scared of, you, your, your skills will open up doors for you no matter where you are, and your right network as well. Like um, being friends with, 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 with Temil and... To, to your team, yeah, building the right community yeah, and all of that. Yeah, my name again. I'm just going to show you. To your team, yeah, to your team, yeah. So please, I'm just talking so that we can ask questions. Um, let's ask question about AR. Personally, is my host there? Is my guest around or is yeah, gone? Yeah, I'm here with you. yeah. Personally, I'm building. I'm building um in the tourism sector for using um augmented reality. It's one, it's one area that it will be needed. And I can think of even the medical field as well, it will be needed as well for the, especially the VR and even the mixed reality or the extended reality, as you said. So there will be more developers needed in that area, but we are still in the early stage. So I think it's a very good career path that anybody here is considering should actually go into. So any contribution? Or oh, you want to say something here? Tell your so, so yeah, yeah. Before before we before we go there, so I want to say something about um, about this whole technology and the buzz around it. So if you if you, if nobody remembers vividly, I remember um, ARVR started buzzing about six years ago, actually, like buzzing. Like when I mean buzz, it was like it was everywhere. The way Chat GPT is everywhere right now. That's how you did. I say ARVR, you are UX actually. Started buzzing about six years ago. Everybody's like, oh, you are here, CCI. And um, it was not, nobody could really project into the future of, okay, this thing is going to be, it's going to be this thing. But right now, it is the thing. A lot of Nigerians, sometimes Figma is trending as generally on Twitter. And why is Figma trending on Twitter if a lot of UIX designers are not on Twitter? Do you understand? So that means there are a lot of UIX designers. But now, AR, VR, external reality, mixed reality, virtual reality, everything together. It's, it's another thing that seems like a big buzz. And if you really project, um, so currently there's a projection that as of 2025, um, the e-commerce sector would have made up to 2.4, I think 2.4 or $2.5 billion from augmented reality. That's e-commerce augmented reality. And also amongst this, we have um, we have e-commerce, we have, we have all these things basically. So, um, especially e-commerce. So it's something that, I mean, you want to buy something, you want to see what it looks like on your space before you go ahead and buy. So that's usually what, um, that's usually what it is like. So it's something that is going to be a boss. It's something that if you go into it now, in the next coming couple of years, it's going to be a career path that you'll be happy you went into. So I have a question. I've learned, I've learned the basic of AR, VR, and uh, maybe... Yes, I've learned the basics. So tell us, how do I get a job? So what do I do? 
what should I be uh, looking at for? Yeah. I, mean, I know you mentioned building a public, putting out your portfolio, because even me myself, like if you look at my, my I'm, I'm very active on, I don't know if you saw my last post on LinkedIn, I was sent to go do some training for some researcher in the US. So I went somewhere outside Accra to help her go deliver some training. That's what I do as well. It's also my part of my hustle. So because my work is out there, like <laughs> I put my stuff, I put out what I do. So if I do training, for instance, I post it. And yeah. last year I had a very major break. I did some work in the crypto space for like for an extended period of time. Because also, once again, how did I get connected to those guys? My work was out there. So maybe yeah. you have a different approach in the AR VR space. So tell us how do we get opportunities and get jobs? Yeah. Yeah. So aside being active out there, join communities and all of that. Um Right now, a lot of people are already looking for AR VR designers. So if you go on LinkedIn, if you can, if you have your phone right here, go on LinkedIn and search AR, go to jobs and search AR VR design. Now I'm more active on LinkedIn than anywhere else. That's how I'm always mentioning LinkedIn. Now, if you go there and search AR VR design on LinkedIn, you will see a list of job opportunities. See, everybody's looking for AR VR designers. You know, there's this thing about psychology. I, can't, I don't know exactly what it is, but one of my friends, she told me, she told me about it. She, like, she explained it. I can't remember what she called it, but it's how when you are interested in something, the tendency that you see it more often is high. Do you get? Uh, also, all these um, LinkedIn and a lot of a lot of um, a lot of Google ads, particularly, they use this they use this algorithm. Do you understand? So how you, you like something, you look for something, you start seeing it everywhere. Now, if you make yourself more versatile with or make yourself more exposed to Augmented reality, virtual reality, ex extended reality generally, you will get to see jobs. There are a lot of jobs. I'm serious. You would apply for jobs like a normal guy that is looking for a UX design job. Do you understand? So there is that access, but there's also the access that comes from reaching out to a lot of people. Going on, I, I'm into AR, also into AR, uh, let's be friends. Now, I've worked on one AR project before. It was not so much an intense product, um, it was very busy. Um, there, there was someone that reached out to me from my friend's friend, that kind of vibe, do you get? So she reached out and she was like, she wants me to come and co-found a BR startup. Now, school AR, if, you, if, you, if you've heard about it. So it's like an ed tech AR, augmented reality platform, a virtual reality platform also, that teaches secondary school students how to mix the chemicals. Literally, like, it's, it's very great. How to mix chemicals, how physics works on the road, how there's there's the pull of gravity, there's the reaction and all those things. So how those things work in real time, watching them with VR or AR. So that's what it does. And they reached out to me. And how they reached out to me, in such, a, in such an opportunity, such a great opportunity. How they reached out to me was via a friend, from, I, a friend I met from the community. So reach out, let people just know that you are into this thing. If you can, Put out content. Putting out content does not mean that you are a senior or you have to be a senior to put out content. I have a lot of friends that know this around me that you don't have to be a senior to put out content. Put out content. We'll go to LinkedIn and say that, okay, I started working on this project. I'm, I'm very new to UIUX or ARB or rather. Um, I had a session with Tartin and um, Sahara and Tob, and this is what I learned. I hope to dive more into this. Now, that's a, that's a content that if I don't know the person that posted this and I see the link, or I see the content, I would, I would be interested in knowing more about the person. So put out content, join communities, and search for jobs, literally, the way you get your ideas job. That's awesome. the only, I don't think there's anything that way, basically. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know, there's this funny thing people always say about Twitter, that Twitter is not a real place. I mean, even you, for instance, almost all the people I've invited to my show is through Twitter. And, and people always say, like, oh, Twitter is not a real place. I mean, I've made so much money online, like, connections. If I let me say, like, <laughs> Oh, most of the money I've made, <laughs> yeah, most of the money I've made actually as as an adult, most of the money I've made are through online connections. I'm I'm not I'm not joking. Like people I met online on platforms, even so, there's there's this thing about LinkedIn. It, it's 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 even dependent on where you save your location to. In the in the UI UX um, session that we had, the guy also mentioned it, and I also experienced it many times myself. I'm I'm in Ghana. I get people reaching out to me in because I'm in Ghana. And they want me to carry out project for them in Ghana. So you see, you see how it works. So if something also maybe okay, you are saying okay, you have the skills now. Maybe you have the basic skills. You are entry level designer in AR or VR. You can temporarily change even change your location to the US 
and you see and you see that there will be job listings that's another trick so i've given them tricks you see <laughs> yeah you can temporarily change your location and and uh, as i said also <laughs> when you go to their jobs maybe if you're just starting out now look at the job description look at what they want you to do in the job then use that to learn in the job that will give you an insight on what to learn and what not to learn what not to spend your time on so you look at what the, the job description oh we want you to do this want you to do this this and this and this so that should also be part of your apart from the tire 10 roadmap you can also have your roadmap and you getting a job you can say that okay in the next three months i want to learn this tire 10 roadmap alongside i'm learning this other requirement that is needed how to use maybe jira how to use um, all this project management platform as well so you're just not building just one skill you're building two skills then after that we can say oh you see a friend and you tell him that okay i can design an ar project for you for free just to build your portfolio to build up your confidence that way you should do maybe do one or two jobs for free you go to app work two more jobs or look for internship that's another opportunity thing that people don't look at nobody will employ you because you've learned one thing online they will employ you because you have a good portfolio and you can do what you say you can do experience yeah. really matters no one says anybody can learn anything these days but we need a very best we need people who know how to do what they are doing who can also present themselves very well as well so that's yeah. just my little addition um how can we change job location on linkedin by just changing your location just change your location if your location is nigeria just your, your profile settings just change your profile settings to anywhere else you want in the world and the jobs in those areas right now uh, i think my location is set in the netherlands because i'm doing some job with the netherlands some netherlands company so i'm seeing jobs like i'm I like ah but most of them are not remote <laughs> that's the problem so like you see the job they're even um, popping up as i said the algorithm the cash when you visit websites the cash follows you up and down and and gives you relevant um ads that based on what you search online so yeah that's how you say just change your location on linkedin and you see the jobs for certain locations coming up as well try the us yeah. there are more jobs there yeah another thing another thing you could do is you could search and on the location part you could change it to emea also emea gives you access to remote opportunities everywhere in the world so when you're searching what do you call it i type it in the channel in the comment okay e -M -E -A. okay 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 so when you want to search when you click on the do a UX designer or pro designer or AI designer in the location, don't put put aside Saharan sub suggestion. You can also do this. You put E M E A. It's gonna bring out a list of a list of remote opportunities on LinkedIn. So yeah, very important. You can easily get three k three thousand dollars monthly salary. Like don't settle for less. <laughs> even that one, you are being ripped off. Actually, yeah, they will not even pay yeah, someone in the exactly. US that amount. Yeah. So, but imagine if your skills in Nigeria, you are earning your three thousand dollars per month quietly, staying in Nigeria. You are like one percent income earners in Nigeria, in Ghana, in most places in in, in West Africa. <laughs> Even if you are earning like a thousand dollars, you are in the one percent income earners in Sub-Saharan Africa. These are the things that you have to. Do. Um, it's, it's unfortunate. We are. We are we are very yeah. very very poor, and they even pay us. Even when you end up getting this job, what they will pay someone living in the US is not what they will pay you. But if you are skilled enough, you can negotiate for a higher fee. Yeah. 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 Hello. We are glad you are inspired. Um, any other questions? We're wrapping up. I mean, if this is it, I mean, we've learned a lot for us to go back to the drawing table, and get the skills, and get a job, and build a portfolio, and go out there and win. Yeah. All right. If no, if no further questions, um, Tayotain, any um, closing final words for us? Uh, yeah. So one of the most important things from what I said, from everything I said, is demystify what seems like the mystery. That's an extended reality. Don't let it seem like it is hard. You see, this is a short session, so there's no time to go into all the details. So go on YouTube and search how, you see the resources that I dropped? They are great. Go on YouTube and search how to do this, how to do that. I want to get into this. How do I start? Although YouTube is one place that can really help. Um, then another important thing I said also is communication. Communication on your channel. Reach out to people as much as you can. You can reach out to me telling me that the tire of your, of your car got spot and you decide to pack it in my DMs. I'm going to be... You know, I do that a lot. You can reach out to me. Let's have fun. Let's talk. I, I like it when people reach out to me. 
GJ so we can talk. I like to connect. So reach out people, connect to people, join communities. I have access to like two ARVR communities so I can link you out. There's ARVR Africa and then there's another one so I can link you to all these communities when you reach out to me. Um, you can easily get access to communities like that. Um, to to um, opportunities from communities. So yeah, that's everything I want to say. I really hope you had a great time. I hope everybody's inspired like Eloho is inspired. All right, Tayotin, thank you so much. And thank you to everybody who took out time to join our session tonight. God bless you. Thank you so much. The video will be available. We'll share the link on, on, the, on the various channels. I'll send a link to Tayotin and with all the resources included. Thank you so much and God bless you and have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> All right, Tayo, thank you so much. Um, everybody, we'll just wait for this to run down. Um, is we still have like two minutes. So when you come back using the same link, you can join using the same link. It actually, it's the same link, and we'll continue from this project idea page and we, we go on from there. Then we have a QA question and answers. So if you've had any questions so far, he has said so many fantastic things already about AR, VR, mixed reality, and extended. This is the first time I'm actually hearing about extended reality because I know about the first three, VR, AR, and, and mixed reality, but I didn't know about much about extended reality. And it's good you mentioned the Snapchat bit as well. Say my internet is not stable. Yeah, Snapchat, TikTok, and there's this particular filter that is going around currently. Um, the one that makes you look younger or like a teenager. I see some people talk about it like, yeah, those are, those are augmented reality. Those are AR yeah. um, solutions inbuilt yeah. into... You can create all those things with Spark or Snap yes. Lens. Yeah, yeah. Even this one that um, La Cisse Lenu, the one that he uses for Easy, his... Yeah. Um, yeah. Those are AR solutions. So I personally feel like AR currently, as you said, has more viability than even VR. I don't know. I feel I feel like AR win the war. Between if you pay, <laughs> I don't that's my own feeling. I feel like AR will eventually win because I mean, especially for the low barrier entry as well. All you need is a mobile device as opposed to putting something on your face, another expensive. I have one here. I have I have my own. I don't even use it. It's still in the box. I don't use it for anything. <laughs> I don't remember the last time I used it. Like, it's just lying down there. Nothing has no use. I'm even asking people to come and pick it up from my house in Accra. Like, if you want to play with it over the weekend, please come and take it and go and have fun with it because it's just lying down here, useless. So, <laughs> at the end of the day, AR will win, win the war. So, guys, please kindly join back when the, when the link goes off, um, the session ends, and let's have part two of the session. And um, yeah, let's learn something about AR and VR. See you soon.